heads. And today I will speak about the situation when uh, dependencies in test cases are inevitable and how my team uh, test images in the cloud and we handle the situation when we have, we have dependencies in test cases, right? Uh, the thing is, when it's, uh, the title you see on the slide is a bit different from the one in the conference program. The thing is, when I submitted my talk proposal, there was a limit for the abstract length but there was no any limit for the title. I'm a quality engineer. I couldn't, I couldn't resist. I submitted uh, the title longer than 80 characters. And, and it was accepted, as you see. Many thanks to the conference committee who managed to print that long title in the conference program. I couldn't fit it on our corporate template. I had to shorten it a bit. Uh, image is a snapshot of operation system, all right? And if you have that image, you can launch uh, instance, a virtual, roughly saying, a virtual server, a virtual machine uh, in the cloud, in public or in private network. Of course, not one instance, but like many instances. The cloud, it's like the library of uh, images. Uh, you come there, you choose operation system you like, you choose the instance time uh, type you want to launch it on, you hit the launch button and voila, you have your instance or instances up and running. In Red Hat, we have many projects we work on, and we do we make RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Operation System, and of course we make RHEL images for the cloud because nowadays for, for cloud usage because nowadays many things are happening somewhere high in the skies, in the skies, right? So when our engineers build real image, we, we, we need to test it. We need to validate that any instance uh, which is launched using that particular image will run fine. Uh, there are, in the cloud, there are many different uh, type of instances. Instance type compromise various combinations of CPU, of storage, memory, and network capacity. And that gives you the flexibility to choose different mix of resources uh, you need for, uh, for your application. Right? And validating images, we need to be ensure that any instance will work fine regarding its type. So the question is, how many images we test, validate? How many instances we launch, and how often we do it? In average, a uh, new image of rail uh, appears like every nine months. It's like a baby. We have a new image of rail 6 and a new image of rail 7 every nine months. But this is the only general availability version of releases. But before that, we have patch release and we have a candidate release, right? And uh, besides that, with every release, there is atomic version of RHEL comes. Besides that, during the year, several security issues can happen. For example, like Heartbleed or Shellshock and some others. And in this case, we need to uh, run our validation again and replace all affected images in the cloud. Uh, furthermore, during the year, for example, last year, I think we ran our validation like six, seven times because of security issues. Uh, besides it, uh, during the year, uh, new regions can appear. Uh, last year, we launched, uh, we tested new, two new regions, Korea and US Central. So you see, here we have like thousands of instances to launch in order to validate our image. Uh, what is a test case for the instance? I mean, instance is a virtual machine, right? And how would you validate instance? I believe you would check that your network and uh, your IP table set up, that you can change uh, the um, password of the user, uh, root, um, of the root user, that you use Linux in some particular mode, or maybe even you want to check that your time zone uh, it, you, what is your time, default time zone is, right? So you see, here we have like many test cases. And for example, to validate a real image, we have a test plan of um, average like 70 test cases, sanity test cases to run. So as I said before, we have thousands instances to launch and we have that many test cases. So we already have like hundreds of uh, thousands of test cases uh, to run. And here is the first problem comes. We can't launch that many instances to run all our 
uh, test cases in a pearl. It's simply expensive. And here is a commercial part. It's simply expensive even for the company, which makes like two billion dollars in the revenue. And what is the second problem? Dependencies. I'm speaking about dependencies and test cases. Test cases are dependent. For example, if I want to add a storage in RHEL, I need first to partition my disks and I need to format it in some desired uh, file system type. And then I need to mount it. And if I want to be sure that my storage mounts every time the system reboots, I also need to update the ETCFS file, right? So, and if I want every separate uh, test case for every of these uh, functions, I have dependent test cases. I can't run them in parallel. Do you agree? So, why you have uh, two problems? It's expensive, and uh, uh, our test cases are dependent. So, what we do? We run test cases with dependencies. And before to tell you how we do it, I want to stress several uh, moments. We execute all our test test cases remotely. Uh, we don't copy and any Python code on our instance. We don't know what Python is on our instances. And we, have, uh, we don't have our dependencies there. And we can't bring them there, okay? Every test case is a Python script, which is a cute bash code. Then we run only and only sanity test, test cases. And all uh, results of our testing we collect and analyze on our local machine. So how, let's examine how we run our test, case, uh, test cases with dependencies only on one machine. Uh, we can represent all test cases, the whole test plan, as a directed SLA graph, where all tests are represented like parents and children. And then we can proceed our uh, sibling test cases in parallel. To do it, we, bring, uh, we separate all uh, test cases in layers or in etages, whatever you call it, and we create a list, a list of lists to, to run our test cases in parallel. So let's examine how it happens in detail. Imagine there is a worker, a uh, worker for a man, let's call it for a man, in uh, a red hat. So it takes the first test case, the root one, and it adds it to the queue, to the first queue, to the first list. Then it starts to proceed uh, its children. It takes the first children and starts and writes it to the second list. And it uh, do it with, uh, does it with all children of the root test case, completing the, uh, the second line. So when all children of the first root test cases were added to the second queue, the first queue is considered to be completed. And here, other two workers, or many amount of workers actually, can join the party and start to execute this test case. While uh, this test case is executed, the foreman is waiting for it, and uh, it starts to build the third queue. It starts to visit the children of the second queue, one by one, adding all of them in the third queue. When the second queue is completed and the yellow guys uh, uh, finished execution of the first test case, they can move and uh, continue to work with the second queue. And uh, the foreman continues working with the third queue. So this algorithm proceeds for the while all the test cases will be executed that way. So as you see, we executed all our test cases, we, we separated all our test cases in a list of lists and proceeded further. So how all test cases are executed in, in parallel? Uh, the amount of test cases uh, in a queue, uh, sibling test cases, can vary. It depends on uh, how wide is your uh, list. And, uh, Imagine we have some pool of workers. So how they will handle those test cases in parallel? If you have two workers and, for example, five test cases, so two workers can take two test cases, one for each, right? And when one test case is uh, completed, one worker gets free and uh, moves on to the third queue. And the operation proceeds while all test cases will be executed here. But the thing is that we need to limit our uh, amount of workers. 
uh, every worker, it's SSH connection. And as I said before, we have thousands of test cases to run. We have m m many instances, so we can't uh, m start like thousands of SSH connection from one host, right? It will just it will just not work. So we need to limit it, and we limit uh, it with uh, variable par uh, parallel test cases. So that's how it works for one instance. And how we do it for many instances, because we have like thousands of them, we just repeat this procedure for all other instances. And in average, we run something like 200 uh, instances to validate one image, and it covers all uh, instance types and regions. Uh, the thing is that uh, we also need to limit the amount of instances to be executed. Why? For the same reason. We can't uh, initiate that many SSH connections, right? And how we, so we have a pool of workers which uh, work uh, on instances uh, and uh, test them in parallel. In the same way, way like another pool of workers do it uh, with parallel test cases. So that was about how uh, our thing works, like the logic uh, of the things. And what's about implementation? Uh, so far, we have it implemented in Python 2. And with my team, we plan to update it to Python 3 one day. So we launch our instances using uh, both in, uh, Python interface to talk to Amazon uh, Cloud, because everything, all the instances we uh, launch, uh, we test it in uh, Amazon Cloud. Uh, Paramika and RPC we use to uh, execute our test cases via SSH. And uh, maybe some, somebody of you uh, guessed that workers, the pool of workers I was talking about, it's actually a pool of Greenlands. Because the whole thing, the whole uh, tool uh, runs like on one process. Then to uh, implement our uh, interface, uh, command line, we used uh, our um, library. And all our data, all our specifications and results, we keep like YAML files, so we have uh, YAML parser. Uh, the tool I was talking about uh, was implemented by or had a QE team to validate real images in the cloud. Uh, we validate them, as I already mentioned, in Amazon EC2. Uh, and uh, that's an open source project, as everything we are doing in the head, right? So if you follow this GitHub link, you will find the source code there. Uh, you are welcome to use it, you are welcome to contribute, we will be happy. Uh, so maybe among other features I can mention, some, we run it for RHEL and for Amazon EC2, but my colleagues uh, try to run it in Fedora and Top Stack. So as a form, it worked. And uh, this tool is also support sort uh, site uh, test, uh, libraries tests. So I think that's um, almost everything I wanted to, to tell you about how we uh, validate our real images and how we handle dependencies and test cases and uh, run hundreds, hundreds of, of thousands of thousands of test cases. Thank you a lot for your attention. If you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Yes? Are there interdependencies between instances? For example, if some test failed on one instance, don't bother running it on the other instance, because most likely it's broken on all of them? So the question is, was uh, if there are any dependencies between instances? No, there are no, because instances of a separate virtual machine, and we test uh, that uh, um, Instance, which is latched using some particular real image, works fine, and instance uh, doesn't depend on any other instance, right? It's a separate node. So we don't have any dependencies between instances. My second question is, do you sort by runtime, the test themselves? Because it makes sense to start with the, in each parallel um, line, you know, start with the slowest one. So the question was if we do any sort of uh, test before executing them in parallel. No, as far as I don't uh, know, we don't. It's just random process. We have a list of uh, test cases, sibling the test cases. They are not dependent, right, to execute, and we have a pool of greenlands. So uh, um, those greenlands, they, they just take the first one they want. So it's like, that's it. <laughs> no any sort. Ah, yes? Hi. So over cloud, uh, 
products. So there's uh, certain kinds of operations which are consistent from transaction, like uh, for example, create this, and then the operation is remotely uh, will continue over the hypervisor or server. So in uh, that method, I uh, didn't understand if uh, when is the test case over. So when the transaction is uh, uh, well uh, committed or executed, yeah. or after this whole process of, for example, create this ends. Did you understand what I mean? Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> I understood I, uh, how to rephrase it, to repeat it. So uh, when, the, when the test case is ended, yes? How, how we get the result? Is it, of this uh, test case to the end, when the transaction is uh, successfully uh, submitted or when is the actual process? The actual process, yes. When, so when is uh, the transaction or successful process? Every test case is a Python script, we, it is used bash code remotely, right? So we send our bash code, I don't know, for example, to check uh, what is the default time zone. And we collect the uh, exit status of bash command. So when we get the exit status, whether it's zero or one, we have our result, whether the test case is passed or it's failed. That's it. So we don't wait for the process to the end. Uh, we're actually just doing this, this execution and afterwards there will be a test case that will check if this transaction... No, no, we are waiting. We are waiting for the test cases to be, for bash code to be executed and we are uh, expecting the, the exit code of uh, bash uh, script, yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, please? Okay, so I think we're done. Thank you a lot for your attention.